Well, leaders in Tokyo are looking to the past to set Japan's energy policy for the future. They're preparing to sign off on a plan that will commit the country once again to nuclear power. The move marks a major turnaround from a promise by their predecessors to create a nuclear-free society. NHK World's Mayu Yoshida has the story. Officials at the industry ministry review the basic energy plan every three years. The document sets the guideline for Japan's mid- to long-term energy policy. The officials published a draft of the latest plan earlier this month. The government is likely to finalize it in January. The draft describes oil and liquefied natural gas as important power sources, but it also says nuclear power would belong to a fundamental category of energy known as the baseload. The plan says renewable energy is promising, but not cost-efficient. It pledges to decrease Japan's reliance on nuclear power, but it also praises the energy source for being cost-efficient, stable, and helping to cut carbon emissions. The draft advocates restarting nuclear reactors as long as they meet strict safety standards. <laughs> The government will restart reactors after making sure they're safe. The basic energy plan reflects Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's resolve to ditch a promise made by the previous administration. That government, led by the Democratic Party of Japan, vowed to end the country's reliance on nuclear power by the 2030s. It made the decision in the wake of the 2011 disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Meltdowns at three reactors prompted a national debate about energy in resource-poor Japan. All 50 reactors across the country went offline. The government at the time said it will limit the lifespan of all nuclear reactors to 40 years. And it said Japan would have no new plants. Business leaders opposed the decision. They said Japan's economy will struggle without a cheap and stable energy source. We need to ensure the safety of reactors as quickly as possible and accelerate the return to nuclear power. Nuclear power plants supplied Japan with about a third of its energy needs before the Fukushima accident. Since then, their contribution has fallen dramatically. Now, the energy sector depends largely on thermal power. Oil and gas imports have soared. The weakening yen has pushed Japan's trade deficit to a record high. It's marked its longest losing streak of 17 months. Some firms are worried about rising electricity costs way on their bottom line. Takao Kashiwagi, who sat on the panel to draft the energy plan, says Japan needs nuclear power to be competitive. We'll have major problems without nuclear power. Businesses will have to leave the country. Industries will become hollowed out, jobs will dry up. So Japan should restart its nuclear plants under the new safety standards in order to stay strong and globally competitive. That's what our panel concluded. But the Japanese public remains wary. The latest NHK poll shows that nearly half of the respondents oppose restarting nuclear power plants. Some experts say the plan does not count the cost of using cutting-edge technology to improve safety at plants or of decommissioning them. The new plan is based on a one-sided estimate of the cost of nuclear energy. It only looks at fuel prices. It doesn't show if it's really economical to maintain nuclear power plants either. People can't make informed judgments with data like that. The political process of adopting this plan has been completely unsatisfactory. I don't think the plan is a true reflection of public opinion. Fukushima is still fresh in the minds of Japanese people. Problems at the plant are likely to have an impact for years to come. But Prime Minister Abe and his cabinet say 
they're taking all necessary precautions. They plan to press on and make nuclear energy a pillar of Japan's economic growth as it charts a path to recovery. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi power plant has submitted a 10-year business plan to the government together with Japan's state-backed fund for nuclear accident compensation. The plan does include restarting nuclear reactors to turn the utilities business around. Tokyo Electric Power Company plans to begin restarting reactors at the Kashiwazaki Kariwa plant along the Sea of Japan coast next July. TEPCO estimates this will help cut fuel costs for thermal power generation and lead to a pre-tax profit of about one to two billion dollars a year. The power company plans to set aside 20 billion dollars to decommission the Fukushima Daiichi plant and deal with its contaminated water. TEPCO will ask about 2,000 workers in the corporate group to take early retirement. We think it's our top priority to take full responsibility for the Fukushima accident. Hirose said the company will keep itself lean and seek profitability. Resuming the operation of the Kashiwazaki Kariwa reactors will remain key to the plan. But these reactors can be restarted only after government safety inspections and approval by local authorities. There's still a possibility that the reactors may not go back online. A Japanese power company wants to restart a nuclear reactor damaged by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Tohoku Electric has applied for a government safety screening of the reactor at its Onagawa plant in northeastern Japan. A fire broke out at the plant when the quake hit. The tsunami damaged some of the plant's emergency generators. The utility is building seawalls 29 meters high to protect the plant from future tsunamis. It also plans to install a filtered vent by March 2016. Plant officials would use the vent in an emergency to release pressure in a reactor containment vessel. The vent would also limit radioactive emissions. We want to prove that our safety measures meet the new standards set by the Nuclear Regulation Authority. Actually, we're doing more than that. We want local people to know that. We want to dispel their anxiety about the safety of the plant. Utilities have submitted safety screening applications for eight other plants since July. Those plants were not damaged by the quake and tsunami. All reactors in Japan are now offline. A new set of safety guidelines for nuclear facilities other than power plants has come into effect. They will cover almost 250 facilities nationwide. The rules are much stricter than before, especially for reprocessing plants. Operators will need to take similar measures against severe accidents as those who run nuclear plants. NHK World's Takafumi Terui has more. In total, 248 facilities across Japan will be subject to the measures. The new rules apply to nuclear facilities, such as a nuclear fuel fabrication facility in Tokai, Ibaraki Prefecture. Japan's nuclear regulatory body, the NRA, approved the rules last month in response to the 2011 accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The new safety standards were laid down considering Japan's environmental conditions and other difficulties. I think they are strict enough. The severity of the requirements varies according to the type of facility. For instance, Kyoto University's research reactor in Osaka is required to take measures to prevent accidental emissions of radioactive materials. The NRA's personnel will regularly carry out inspections. The strictest rules apply to two reprocessing plants and seven fuel fabrication facilities. Operators must take measures equivalent to nuclear power plants to prevent serious accidents such as hydrogen explosions and nuclear chain reactions. 
They need to have emergency measures in place in case of huge earthquakes and tsunamis. Anticipating the new measures, the operator of Rokkasha reprocessing plant in Northern Aomori Prefecture has already installed some equipment, such as this fire truck. It can douse storage pools for spent fuel to prevent the fuel from melting in the case of a power loss. They also install this air compressor to help prevent hydrogen explosions by supplying air to lower the hydrogen concentration in the plant in the case of a power outage. But even with these new standards, some local officials and residents who live near these facilities express anxiety. Misawa City in Aomori is in the vicinity of the reprocessing plant in Lokkasho. Currently, the city has an evacuation plan for residents who live within a five-kilometer radius. But they feel that the Japanese government should review the measures. We hope the government will announce the guidelines as soon as possible. Then we can start drawing up the new evacuation plan. I think evacuation plans for residents should be strengthened along with the preparations for starting the plant. But I feel that the only thing taking place is the speeding up of the start of the plant's operation. The accident at Fukushima Daiichi shook the nation. Even with the new, stricter regulations, the anxieties of people living close to nuclear-related facilities have not been entirely quelled, and more steps need to be taken. Takahumi Terui, NHK World, Tokyo. Japan's meteorological agency says there were more than 2,300 noticeable earthquakes in Japan this year. That's lower than last year's tally, but still higher than the annual average before the March 2011 quake. Agency officials say they categorized 2,366 tremors as noticeable earthquakes by December 29th this year. That's down from over 3,000 last year and from more than 10,000 in 2011. In April, a magnitude 6.3 quake shook Awaji Island in Hyogo Prefecture. That was for the first time in two years that they observed an intensity of 6 minus on the Japanese seismic scale of 0 to 7. And in October, a magnitude 7.1 quake off Fukushima Prefecture prompted officials to issue a tsunami advisory. Meteorological agency officials say the March 2011 earthquake is still producing aftershocks. They're urging people to be prepared for a major quake. The people at the agency have also added up the number of typhoons and tropical storms. They say there were 31 over the past year. The officials say 14 of the storms affected Japan. Nine of those approached or hit in autumn. That equals the seasonal record set in 1966. Severe tropical storm Manyi hit western Japan in September and caused serious damage. The next month, a typhoon Wipa triggered landslides on an island south of Tokyo. 36 people died. Agency experts said high pressure over the Pacific Ocean and unusually weak westerly winds drove the storms toward Japan. Japanese government officials say they plan to revise their policy for disposing of nuclear waste. They want to play a more active role in selecting disposal sites. The officials plan to store highly radioactive waste from nuclear plants deep underground. They're drawing on a law that came into effect in the year 2000. They've been asking their local counterpart to suggest possible sites. But local officials have not offered up any locations. Experts have made some suggestions, and industry ministry officials say earlier this year they'll start acting on those proposals. Government officials plan to drop a list of sites that are deemed scientifically suitable. Then they'll ask local authorities to agree to the projects. It will take time for the government to regain public trust and support for the use of nuclear power. The government should listen closely to people's opinions and change the policy if necessary. 
Some experts are concerned that proceeding with the new policy in a haphazard way could cause doubts among the public and make the issue harder to resolve.